Special thanks to Patreon supporter Zachary Shabal for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scared Wolf here bringing you another Minecraft World War II Path to Build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Liberty Ship. The Liberty Ships was a class of cargo ship built in the United States during World War II. Though British in concept, the design was adopted by the United States for its simple, low-cost construction. Mass-produced on an unprecedented scale, the Liberty Ship came to symbolize U.S. wartime industrial output. The class was developed to meet British orders for transports to replace ships that had been lost. 18 American shipyards built 2,710 Liberty ships between 1941 and 1945, an average of three ships every two days. Easily the largest number of ships ever produced to a simple design. The production mirrored the manufacture of Hog Islander and similar standardized ship types during World War I. The immensity of the effort the number of ships built, and the role of female workers in their construction and the survival of some far longer than their original five-year design life combined to make them the subject of much continued interest. So yeah, the Liberty ships pretty much the backbone of logistics uh, during World War II. They were the main ship used for uh, cargo transportation in their mass-produced size and the intensity that they were pumping these ships out. Um, these ships were also interested in the fact that they really kind of gave the transports a bit of more of a fighting chance. They were equipped with anti-aircraft guns and also possible ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat guns in the forms of um, usually about two five-inch guns. So the ship definitely had uh, some fighting you know, capabilities, which earlier ships in World War II of cargo that were cargo ships did not. So this was uh, basically meant to be able to fight for itself a little bit and maybe possibly take on uh, smaller um, skill ships but you gotta imagine if you have about 10 of these in a convoy and they have a an enemy destroyer or something attacking them and all they, they turn all their guns on them it's definitely gonna be a bad time for that destroyer so definitely a really cool ship and uh definitely some cool history and the fact that some of them are still surviving today and in sailing condition is quite surprising so really cool stuff all around there Anyways, before we go into the jump into taking a look at the ship, I want to go into special links to Patreon supporter Jack Zachary Shabal for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys are, I do feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is down in the description where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and earn a few requests request you're choosing. Depending on which tier you go ahead and, just, and subscribe to, uh, it helps support my work and the, ch and, uh, the channel and all that stuff, and you also earn a few requests, request, which is pretty cool. So definitely feel free to check it out if you're interested. Anyways, go ahead and jump in to take a look at the design here for the Liberty ship. Um, really awesome looking ship. It's going to fit perfect in the BAFTA builds um, role, maybe in convoys and stuff like that. You guys definitely have the potential now to really make some kind of cool convoys and maybe use some over to convoy uh, rating or something like that scenario. So, uh, really cool looking ship and um, has a lot of cool details in it. So, obviously, in the bow here we have uh, our front mounted guns, um, some A, A gun positions and stuff like that. As we work our way back we have basically the cargo holds up here in the front, with these uh, huge cranes and all that. We then have basically the bridge and the conning tower here, again nothing real crazy or fancy about it. And then as we work our way back we have again two more cargo holds in the back here so plenty of room for cargo. And on the back here, again, some more defensive gun positions or theoretically where those would be positioned. So overall, a really nice looking ship. It's got some great details on it. And again, as I mentioned, it's going to make an awesome uh, scenery piece and some kind of convoy or something like that you guys can be making with uh, these bathtub build models. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, go ahead and move into our first layers here. We're going to be technically moving into layers 1 and 2. Now, what I want to go ahead and mention before we begin is that for this tutorial we're going to be structuring the first few layers here half on camera half off so what this means is for probably about the first three lay three or four layers we're going to be going ahead and doing half of the whole on camera and then the other half will be up to you guys to copy over it's pretty straightforward and since the hole is completely symmetrical and pretty basic in shape i think it's a good way to just kind of speed through building the hole and then once we get to the actual superstructure where we start to get complex stuff with the cranes and stuff i'll be doing it all together um, so it makes a little, it may make sense, and as we kind of get into it, you guys will see it's pretty straightforward stuff. Also, if you're building this in the water, which I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do, we want to make sure that we position this correctly. So for this to be positioned correctly in the water, we want to make sure that we have our uh, first layer here, or 
basically, technically this is layer 2 because we have some trapdoors that are going to go on the bottom here, but we want this layer here to be basically a full block underwater. So as you can see here, the blue concrete representing the water level, you can see where the block here is positioned like so. So once you have that cleared away, we can go ahead and get started with this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our center line of our ship. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 red concrete blocks in length here. I'm going to go and double check my count here to make sure it's good. And 24 um, is the total we want here down the center. And then we're going to place a nice stone brick wall here on the ends. To off the stone brick wall, we're going to place it on an item frame with a cobweb. Now note that this, if this is underwater, or if this is in the, in the water, you won't be able to place down this item frame. Um, just due to, uh, you know, water physics and stuff like that. So, uh, you can't place that item frame there. Um, but anyways, if we want to go ahead and then skip a space from the stone brick wall, or come off the item frame, we're going to place down a uh, red concrete block right down the end there. Now once that's done, we're going to go to the bottom here of the red concrete block right here. And then we're going to go and place down a acacia wood trap door, followed by a second one, and then a third one that goes back like so. So you have those three acacia wood trap doors there on the bottom, like so. After that's done, we're going to go and then work our way out to the sides. Going back up to the front of the ship here, we're going to go to our third red concrete block back. We're going to place down a stone top, or stone, or sorry, a brick top slab, followed by a brick upside down stair, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 red concrete blocks back, and then two uh brick walls like that. Again, going back up toward the front, we're going to go to our second red concrete block here. We're going to place down a acacia wood trap door coming off of it, followed by a brick top slab, two brick ups and downstairs, and then one, two, three, four, five, six uh, red concrete blocks, two brick ups and downstairs again, a brick top slab, and a acacia wood trap door just like that. And once that's all done there, you're going to go ahead and take what we did on the right side here and flip it over to the left side. So basically looking at it from above here, you should have a shape that looks just like this here for the uh, bottom hole of the uh, ship. So again, pretty straightforward stuff there, and that's going to do it there for layers one and two. With that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down a red concrete block on top of this one right here in the front, and then we're going to place down a brick wall coming off of it. Going back from this red concrete block, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, and 23 red concrete blocks back, a brick top slab, a acacia wood trap door come out the brick top slab, and then a brick stair here on the back, and that's going to do it there for your center line of the ship. Go out to the sides, we're going to go to the second red concrete block from the front here, and place a brick wall to the side, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick up down stair, and then one and two, in case you would trap doors after that. Again, going up to the front here, we're going to go to the third red concrete block. We're going to place down a brick wall like this. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen red concrete blocks, brick ups downstairs, brick top slab, and then a acacia wood trap door just like that. And once you have that done, again, you're going to take the same thing over to the left side, and with that complete, you'll have layer number. Uh, three, all done and good to go. That's it for layer three. With that, let's move on to layer number four. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down a andesite wall on top of this brick wall, followed by a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven stone blocks back, and then a stone up down stair here on the rear. We're going to then go to the road to the side here, going back to the front, and on top of this brick wall, we're going to place down an inside wall, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and uh, we're going to go ahead and place down 23 and 24 stone full blocks, and then a brick or stone up down stair there on the back. Again, going up to the front here and going up to the sides, we're going to go to the second stone block from the front. We're going to place down a stone or an inside wall like this, followed by a second inside wall back, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 uh, stone blocks. And then we're going to place down a brick up or a stone up down stair and a stone up down corner stair come off of it like so. So this row of stone blocks right here is going to be a total of 
18 blocks, you have a two stone downstairs, and then your two inside walls like that. And looking from above here, this is what your shape for the ship should look like, something like this from up above here. Anyways, that right there is going to complete layer number four for the build, and with that, that is going to complete our half on half off, and we'll go ahead and start working through all these layers, basically both sides all together. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number five. I right, guess moving on to our next layer, we have layer 5. For layer 5 to get started here, we're going to go on top of this and the wall, and we're going to place down a stone block. We then want to go ahead and place down an item frame on both sides of the stone block, and in the item frame we're going to place down a crossbow bow, uh, rotate it around so that the tip of the crossbow here is facing downwards for the anchor. We're going to go ahead and place down two stone blocks back from that first one, and then two and the walls to both sides of those two stone full blocks like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab in the middle here, followed by an anvil to both sides, and then a row of three of stone slabs across. To the sides here of the row of three of stone slabs, we're going to place that skeleton to go at a slight angle like this on top of those andesite walls. And then a second stone or skeleton skull going back from it, uh, basically uh, nice and perpendicular here with the um, that andesite wall. After that's done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a daylight to set daylight detector, a row of three of daylight detectors, and we're going to switch them to the night mode, we're going to place down an additional row of three, and then a third row of three like this, all switching them to the night mode. And then to the sides here, of the last two rows, we're going to place down spruce wood pressure plates to both sides. For the middle space here, we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite blocks across, followed by a grindstone facing this direction here on both sides. We're going to go and then do the same thing we did before here, so three rows of three, of daylight detectors turn to night mode and we want to go ahead and then place down a row of spruce pressure plates here to both sides. We're going to place down a row of three polished andesite blocks across the middle here this time with a skeleton skull on both ends on top of the stone blocks and then we want to place down two rows of three of the daylight detectors again in night mode with spruce pressure plates here to both sides. Then we're going to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of three of stone blocks, followed by a second row of three, a third row, and a fourth row like that. We're going to go ahead and go to the sides, and we're going to take our dark oak defense gates, and we're going to place down a row of four of dark oak defense gates opened up toward the stone blocks, all the way along the side here. And we're also going to take dark oak wood signs, and coming off the dark oak wood uh, fence gates, we're going to be placing down dark oak wood signs all the way across here. And same thing over here like so. We then want to take our daylight detectors, we're going to go ahead and again place down three rows of three of daylight detectors like so. We're going to go and then place down a row of three of polished andesite, cross followed by a grindstone to both sides, and we're going to go and then place down a row of three of spruce wood pressure plates there on both sides of those um, daylight detectors. We're going to go ahead and then take our daylight detectors and again we're going to place down three rows of three, all in night mode. And we're going to go and then take a stone brick wall, we're going to place it down here in the sides here of the first row of three. And we want to go ahead and then place down a spruce pressure plate to both sides, followed by a skeleton skull, which is going to be at a slight angle, like so. We're going to go and then place down a stone brick stair here in the middle. Followed by a stone slab to both sides, and on the sides of the stone slab, we're going to place a dark oak wood sign. Turn off the back of the stone brick stair, we're going to place down a stone brick full block, and then a andesite wall turn off both sides of the stone brick full block with again dark oak wood signs around the sides here of these andesite walls. And on the very back here, we want to go in very simply just place down a skeleton skull on top of the stone up sound stair. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have here for the first layer. Uh, or this first layer of basically the superstructure and all that stuff, so layer 5. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number 6. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a lever on top of the stone block, followed by a redstone repeater with the notches flicked out to the sides like that directly behind it. We then want to place down a skeleton skull on top of these two um, anvils, just like that. Going back to this section here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of or a, a stone brick wall here in the middle, and then on top of the the polished andesite blocks here on both sides, we're going to place down wither skeleton schools, and then come off the wither skeleton schools, we're going to place down a narrow brick fence post going forward. Uh, on the back here, we're going to place down the same thing, narrow brick fence post, come off those two narrow brick 
spools there, and then a skeleton spool came off this stone brick, um, stone brick wall, just like that. After that's done, going back to uh, this next set of mass here, we're going to place down a stone brick wall here in the center. We're going to go and go to the sides of it by placing down a dark oak and fence gate to both sides. Turn off the basically the front of the fence gate facing toward the side here. We're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door or dark oak wood sign in my bed. And we want to go and then grab ourselves a white bed and also an item frame. Now for the life rafts, we're going to place down an item frame and a white bed in the end frame rotated around so it's facing upwards same thing over here as well and just so we don't forget we're going to go ahead and also place an item frame on top of these two dark oak wood fence gates and we're going to place down the white beds in them as well again rotate around so they look something like so there for the life rafts after that's done we're going to then place down a narrow brick fence post coming off the fence gates here going toward the superstructure like so superstructure itself we're going to place down a row three of stone blocks across like so stone top slab to both ends and then going ahead and going across the three stone blocks we're going to place down three dark oak wood buttons like that we're going to place down a row of three of stone blocks across the middle here a quartz slab to both sides we're going to go and then place down a narrow row of three of stone blocks across the middle here this time we're going to place down a end rod here to both sides then on the back, we're going to grab ourselves a grindstone. We're going to place down a grindstone here in the middle, followed by a redstone repeater here on top of those stone blocks here with the notches flicked out to the sides as far as possible to the sides, and then a quartz slab on top of the dark oak fence gates like that. After that's done, going ahead and going back to this section here, uh, we're going to place down a stone brick wall here on top of this polished NSI block. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak fence gate off this stone brick wall here to both sides and open it up toward the stone brick wall and just like we did for the four for the second mass right here we're gonna go ahead and place down our uh, item frames around like that and we're gonna go ahead and place down a white bed in each of them and make sure they're rotated around correctly just like this and then of course the ones on the side here we're gonna place down a darker good sign over them like so after that's done, we want to go ahead and grab our dark oak wood fence gates, or fence posts, sorry, and we're going to, or no break fence posts, sorry, and we're going to have them coming off these fence gates, so like so, on both sides. And we're also going to place down a skeleton spool on top of those two stone brick walls, just like that. Now once that's done, go ahead and move it back here to the rear. We're going to place down an iron trap door on top of those two uh, inner side walls, and we're going to place down an end rod on top of that stone brick block. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer number 5 for the build. As you can see, pretty straightforward stuff, and we're starting to get kind of the main structure really starting to show up here. Anyways, with that, uh, we're probably going to move into our last final layers, because mainly most of this stuff is just cranes. So, cranes, so we have basically layers 6, 7, 8, and 9 left to do. So with that, let's go ahead and move into layers 6 through 9. Alright guys, let's go ahead and move into our final layers, we have layers 6 through 9. Now real quick before we do, I want to go ahead and mention also that coming off this stone brick wall right here, we're going to place tiny skeleton school coming off of it facing toward the front. Um, but yeah, with that good, we're pretty much good to go ahead and build up our final layers. So for this to go ahead and get started with here, um, we're going to need basically a block that we can easily tell apart for the build and delete later. So I'm just going to grab an orange block here. We're going to go ahead and start by placing down a wither skeleton school like this, going up from the brick fence post and then one coming off of it. Then going up from this again, we're going to place down an brick fence post, and then we're going to repeat the same process again, just like this. Wither Skeleton School, one come off the back of it, and then we're going to drop down from the Wither Skeleton School with an iron bar. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing here uh, with this one, and then I'm going to leave the rest of the cranes for you guys to do, because there's quite a few, and it is going to be basically, uh, you know, most of this layer here is just building these cranes up. So we get something that looks like this here for the slash crane, iron bar that drops. And you're going to go ahead and take that same design and you're going to replicate it here for each section that we have an air brick wall. So we have an air brick wall right here. So we're going to have a crane that goes up here. And this is going to be built exactly the same as the other ones. So just like that. And there's going to be a crane that goes up right here. And a crane that goes up directly behind it. So you get something that looks like this. 
And on the other side here, we're going to have basically the same amount of cranes. So this side here will have the same cranes in the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys do that real quick. I'm going to do it off camera and I'll come back to you guys once we have those cranes complete. And we'll go ahead and pick up from right there. I guess so as you can see we have all the cranes built up now. And we're going to go ahead and continue on the tutorial. So to begin with, we're going to go to this stone brick wall. We're going to place an additional stone brick wall on top of it for this forward mast. Followed by a stone pressure plate on top of it. Go ahead and go back to the skeleton school. We're going to place down one and two end rods going up from the skeleton school and a skeleton school on top of that end rod. And we want to go ahead and then place down a barrier block coming off the skeleton school and then a barrier block coming off these two wither skeleton schools. On the sides here, we're going to place down two stone buttons and same thing over here, two stone buttons like that. After that's done, go ahead and go into our next mass right here. We're going to place down a stone brick wall that goes up from it like so, iron trap door, and then come off the stone brick wall Toward the front, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, and then going up from the skeleton skull, we're going to place down one, two, and three. Uh, end rods up like that, and dark oak with signs wrapped around the iron trap door, like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then move back to our basically our bridge, our conning tower section. We're going to place down a redstone comparator on top of a stone block in the middle, followed by a lever to both sides of it, like so. We're going to place down an iron trap door on top of those stone top slabs, and then a skeleton skull coming off those iron trap doors facing forward. In the middle here, we're going to place down a stone block, and on top of the stone block, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab. We then want to place down an iron iron or an end rod to both sides. In the middle space here, we're going to place down a redstone repeater again with the notches flicked apart like so, and then a narrow brick fence post on top of these two stone blocks. We're also going to place down a skeleton school on top of the uh, end rods, just like that, to both ends. Now going back here to our rear mast, we're going to go and then place down a stone brick wall on top of this one, iron trap door on top of that stone brick wall. Come off the skeleton school here, we're going to place down one and two end rods going up, skeleton school on top of those end rods. Then we're going to place down a barrier block coming off the skeleton school, going toward the back, and a barrier block coming off those two other skeleton schools. And just like the front, we're going to place down uh, some stone buttons there along the sides. After that, the uh, last thing to do on the back here is to go ahead and go to this end rod, and we're going to place down two more end rods up on top of that one to go ahead and make the rear mass. And with that all complete there, that is going to pretty much wrap up my design here for the Liberty uh, class of cargo ships. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be anything from the side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear on your social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use your favorite project you guys are working on overall. Enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Um, again, make sure to links to Patreon supporter Zachary Chabal for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page, link is down in the description. And with that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.